I read the email like 10 seconds later, like two of my residents knocked on my door and like broke down crying and they were like, I don't know what to do. So that really stressed me out because I felt like I read this email. I couldn't even process what it meant for myself. And I had to like jump into this role of providing other people around me with like this reassurance that everything will be okay when I had no clue how everything would turn out. I was in rehearsal for a music group that I'm on on campus and we were all singing, all the vocalists were in the front and then the drummer, he gets up from his seat and then he throws a peace sign at all of us and he said, we're not coming back. I didn't like it. I'm a senior, so obviously I was very upset. I found out about it during my rehearsals, so I mean, I had a good group of people around me, so I wasn't freaking out in that moment because I didn't think it was real. So I just, I just assumed like, oh yeah, it'll be closed like a week. That's what, that's what the email said, and um, everything went downhill from there. I think I was really calm. I was not surprised about the email, but then people around me start, started to freak out. I, I didn't know how to feel, and I mean, I, I still don't really know how to feel about this whole thing. I feel like I held it together pretty well. And then I had to give a meeting to my community. Too many emotions at once. It just it was overwhelming, yeah. It was just such a surreal feeling because I didn't know whether or not I was supposed to be happy because he was smiling. And then two of the people next to me, they're seniors and so they were instantly sad. So it was this weird mix of me not even knowing how to feel because I was reading the reactions of so many different people. Just not having the opportunity to experience a lot of milestones that you look forward to as a senior was really hurtful for me. For a couple of days, like I couldn't process. I felt like very numb. And when I got in touch with my feelings, I like often felt very overwhelmed, to be honest. There was shock. There was this feeling of, I don't even know what to feel and this also this immediate gripping towards empathy and what that meant for other people to have received the email. I didn't know what I should do and what's the right decision because I had many different options. But the best decision would be to stay here and see how the situation develops. I'm really grateful I can be on campus because um, I don't really have a good relationship with my family. I don't have like a room in Germany where I come from, like all my things are here. The day that I leave here, I will be losing that for the entire summer until I can settle into my grad school place. It's an interesting experience. I need to engage with nature and with people in so many new ways that will never happen before, like in the future. This doesn't feel the same. It literally feels like you took the soul out of something. Like it's just not okay. Day to day I'll see events pop up that I was supposed to be going to. I mean, just earlier this week, we were supposed to have the celebration of diversity, and I work with admissions, and so typically we plan the event and it's on April 16, and that popped up in my phone and I was like, oh, so that's what I was supposed to be doing today. I'm able to find good things that come out of the day, and I think there may be this, there's sometimes this automatic assumption that everybody who's staying on campus is like swimming or sleeping in this perpetual doom. Um, but in this very moment, I'm doing okay. Home for me is between Russia, Austria, and Egypt. Home is just really weird for me right now. Anywhere that there's people that I love and love me. Uh, New York City, the Bronx. Mexico City. Home is an elusive concept. You know, I was born and raised in Jamaica. I went to high school in Jamaica, lived there my whole life. So essentially that would be home. But if I were to go back there, I don't know if that would be possible. I want to say I'm homeless. <laughs> that doesn't mean that I don't have a place where I, you know, I'd end up sleeping under a bridge. It just means that I am a person without home. My family lives in Germany, um, but I haven't lived with them for a very long time. So I don't really know. I wouldn't say it's home. I say home because everyone here is like, oh yeah, I'm going home. So I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm going home. Um, I'm not home. I don't really know where home is. Home has been here for the past four years and I know that it won't be any longer, but I also don't know where it will be next. So I'm on campus right now because the airport in my country is, is closed down. When we first got the email, there was the opportunity for me to go home. I didn't know for my mental health if it would be a good idea for me to go home. I decided to stay here uh, first because of academics. 
It's a weird experience because you don't have that psychological barrier that comes with being removed. You're still here, you still see the buildings, you still see, you know, ODY, you still see Noble, but you can't go inside and so it's almost like a shadow that haunts you in a way and it's there but you can't quite grasp it. I have struggled a lot with like my mental health and being alone with my thoughts without the opportunity to keep busy in different spaces on campus has been very hard and I haven't always managed to maintain a routine or to write all my papers. It's very easy to fall into the trap of not doing anything the whole day and not finding the motivation to do any academic work. It's very easy to just being lazy. It has taught me that like I was very entrenched in this idea of like I can do anything if I just had more time. This period has allowed me to get to know people that I, this semester, said I was going to get to know and kind of procrastinated it, or got to know on a very superficial, scratch the surface level, and not like waiting for those moments of like, oh, this is the time I can hang out with this person. And I don't think that would have happened in the hustle bustle of a semester where you have things that are seemingly more important. I tried to make the most out of the day. Not being bored makes my life positive. I like to be supportive and I like to help people through their struggle. In that, it means I often don't take time to help my own self through my struggle because a part of how I deal with my own challenges is going, okay, let me help somebody else. And so it takes the focus off of me. But now I have no choice but to check in with myself. I have no choice but to spend this alone time and but to be in touch with my own emotions. And in that process, You've got to be strong because if you're not, it'll run you over like a truck. I'm worried about my family. I'm worried about coming back. Like the future, will I be able to graduate? When is the next time that I'm gonna see my friends? I'm worried uh, about my family. I'm worried about my family. A job, you know, I wanna be able to buy food. I wanna be able to pay my bills. I have like a lot of existential fears right now because mm -hmm. I come from a first generation family I come from a family that doesn't accept, for example, my sexuality. I come from a community that doesn't accept my ethnicity. And so going back even just for a summer, um, it makes me afraid. And my family has a lot of financial difficulty through this. So I'm working five jobs right now. And I still don't know how I'm gonna be able to pay for rent during my grad school next year. And I still don't know how I'm gonna buy food during the summer. So I think that I'm just like worried about my existence. I feel like I've worked so hard the past couple of years. I've applied to 10 grad schools. It was insane. I spent over a thousand dollars on application fees and standardized testing. And here I am in my last semester and I still feel like I might go back to my village in East Germany and be a waitress. Like that's, that's really hard for me. When quarantine is over, I really just want to be back home and hug my family and ask my brother how he's doing face to face. I want to say commencement. Or like sitting with a group of friends, having a beer or having a glass of wine, like sitting outside. I'll see my family it would be really nice. And but also I like to be in a crowded street. Go back to normal. I want to welcome my dog. Being able to go outside, being able to give someone a hug being able to say, oh, hey, how are you doing without having to stand six feet apart? I think the simple things. Just do my fellowship and um, be creative next semester. Going to a museum. Can I just hug people? <laughs> just travel would be nice. Gathering groups with people. I'm really looking forward to just getting closure and moving on from all of this.